Good evening and welcome to Inside the Borough, hosted by FAU Owl's Nest. Uh, I am Dan, known as FAU for Show on the forum. I'm here with Aaron, USMC Owl, and Scott, uh, Owl family on FAUOwlsNest.com. Uh, exciting news, lots going on uh, since our, our season has ended. Fortunately, we uh, have something exciting to talk about and not just how, uh, m how many missed opportunities we had this year. So tonight we're going to talk... Starting right off, we're going to talk about the, the announcement that happened today. We're super excited about that. We'll briefly go over the ODU loss and talk about some of the seniors uh, and the impact they've had and, and, and losing them will, uh, what that impact will have. And we'll talk about UAB and Marshall and Conference USA and some of that stuff that, that's happened, uh, and, and then we'll wrap it up uh, there. So, uh, guys, I guess uh, I'll start the $16 million, biggest gift in university history. Uh, going to be, a, the, I guess the highlight is going to be the indoor practice facility, uh, followed up with a full academic center. Seems like there's going to be an updated weight room. I mean, a full, huge thing. And I think for, for us, it's obviously it's a rec recruiting tool. But the first thing that jumped out uh, to me at this is this, this shows that there is a commitment to athletics and specifically the football team. This is not something that we're kind of, well, well hopefully our football team will be good. This is a full-on commitment saying, we are dedicated to the growth of the growth and success of this program. You know what? I since I was at work, I did not get to watch the announcement, so I got to listen to the replay on my iPhone. And thank you, Apple, for not having quick time on iPhones. But I wasn't able to see the video, but I was able to hear it. And you can hear the passion and the excitement in Dr. Kelly's voice, as well as Coach uh, Partridge, Coach Jay, and especially. Uh, Vice President of Athletics, Patrick Chun, about this. And they want the, they wanted this. They're getting it. Thank you again for the, to the Schmidt family for donating this large amount of money. <laughs> and I want to call it my early birthday present because my birthday is Thursday. But, you know, but thank you as an alum. Thank you for helping get our athletics better. So I am excited to actually see where FAU is definitely heading now. So – yeah, it's a it's an amazing gift. It's an amazing facility. Um, I was fortunate enough to be home today, uh, so I got to watch it live. And I was, of course, following on Twitter because you know that's what I do. I have no life. <laughs> so um, the tweets that were coming out about it were amazing. And um, Dieter, our old friend Dieter Kurtenbach, um, put out something that was pretty cool, in my opinion. He says it's it's almost unbelievable that FAU has an indoor practice facility or will, and University of Florida and the and the Canes don't. So let that sink in for a moment. The University of Florida, the flagship of the state, doesn't have an indoor practice facility, and we will. I mean, that's just amazing. The only schools that have it in the state are, according to Andrew Ivins, is UCF has one, and FSU has one. So I mean. It's it's so enormous you can't even we can't even begin to comprehend how it's going to change the face of FAU and especially as they talked about you know they're going to bring sports management into this they'll probably be running the facility teaching that they're going to bring sports medicine into it, it, it they're going to involve the university and all of its entities involved in this it is a monumental game changer and I got to agree with Aaron to the Schmidt family I have no idea if you're ever going to see this but thank you. <laughs> As an amazing Kickstarter to this thing, $16 million towards a $50 million facility. Thanks. You got us almost halfway with one stroke of the pen. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. Yeah, well, I, I agree with that. But but you you brought up a good point that they're, they're bringing in or they're going to allow other programs to be a part of this, like the – um, the NBA and sports management program, but they, you know, they mentioned exercise science, they mentioned nursing. Um, and uh, uh, I saw some, there was the architecture program was maybe going to have some input on it and maybe be a, be a part of it somehow. So I think that's one, the facility is going to be uh, a selling point to, uh, to student athletes, but it's also going to be a selling point to, uh, to normal, to potential students. Um, as far we can, you know, we can say, hey, we're building this new facility and our, if, if we ever figure out what their involvement is going to be, say, look, you're going to be able to be, as a student, you're going to be able to be involved in this. And, and 
then you know, that's another thing that you, uh, you can put on your resume, like, oh, I went to FAU, this is what made FAU stand out. I put this, uh, I was able to, you know, um, help in the, not the construction, but with the ideas and, and, and what was going on there. So I think that's, that's a huge thing. Another thing is, uh, like you said, there's only two other schools that have it in the state, and this just, it, to me, it kind of puts us on a whole other level um, uh, than other, other schools. I, I would say Conference USA schools specifically, but like, there, to me, there's, there's no reason why we should ever, ever lose out on a recruit to uh, FIU ever again. Uh, because our facilities will just blow them out of the water. And I would say even even USF, I mean, all they, to me, they play in a, in a big empty pro, pro stadium that's not even there, it's not on campus. Um, I'm not sure what their athletic facilities are like, uh, but I think that it just, it puts us on a whole nother level. I know, I happen to agree. It is putting us on another level. Like you guys said, they're bringing in a lot of these other, you know, at uh, university programs and uh, sports management, you know, exercise and science, which for a lot of fans, you, if you don't know, if you've never been, uh, if you, you should have been there, but they occupy part of that field house that's right behind the baseball stadium and moving them out of that area into a new facility with modern day equipment, modern day technologies, especially if you're going to help players rehab from injury is going to actually keep us very competitive. And this facility is going to help FAU remain competitive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Andrew brought up another good point um, on Twitter today saying that FAU will basically with this facility be able to host any seven on seven kind of event they want to for high school recruiting. I mean, basically, you know, those seven on seven camps during the summer, are huge deals. They're huge recruiting tools. It's huge exposure for the players. And, you know, we've always kind of hosted the camps. Now we've got a facility that, you know, rain or shine, you want to have a seven on seven tournament with the 10 best teams in the, in the state done deal. We've got the facility to make it happen. By the way, we'll play the championship game at the stadium. Right. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's just <clears throat> it, game changer seems like such a small word for <laughs> what this is, but it, you know, I, it, it's, it's amazing. I saw um, Illinois Al posted there. He said, my God, I never would have thought in a million years this little school I went to in the 80s would have this stuff. Yeah. You know, the other part, real quick, I, I love that, you know, I think President Kelly said, you know, Boke is a college town. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. a college town. You look what they're doing on 20th Street, U Park, all these things. You look what they're doing to that area. They're making that the entertainment, the housing district. They're going to put the kids all over there, get them all away from the old farts here in Boca, and, and get it to the point where, where it's going to be its own community. I mean, it, none of us ever had any. I didn't even – I did not – I don't know. This is probably a dirty little secret. I did not graduate from FAU. My wife did. But I lived in Boca my whole life. So I can't even imagine what this is going to do. It, it's, it's such a leap forward. I, I'm gushing. And like a little school girl. That's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> well, you, you brought up a good point in that we can host things, but to, and I, I've maintained this for, for a, a while, is we just we need to get people in the stadium. We need to get people on campus. We get, need to get people into FAU somehow. And I think the expo, that was one thing that helped accomplish that. But this is another thing is like you get, you get a high school student from uh, Broward, Palm Beach, or Dade, and you get them inside a, well, uh, what the the dolphins call the bubble. We get them in the bubble like that, and we say, "Hey, you can you can come you you can stay close to home. This is going to be something. That they're just it, not even if they're going to be a Division One player, they're going to like and they're going to be impressed with FAU. So, it, mm -hmm. yes, I mean it, it reaches athletics, and and part of me was is like, well, you know, if there was a sixteen million dollar donation that was going to scholarships, is it that big of a deal? Um, which you know, to the like general university fund and stuff like that, it's probably not as big of a deal, but thinking long-term, this is going to be a, a, a game changer uh, long-term. Uh, you know, and someone brought it up on the board and I was actually able to check it out on my break. And someone said when they actually complete this, what is going to happen to the Oxley center once they move everybody out of the Oxley center? I mean, that's another question because you're going to have that space over there. I know they said they're going to use the space behind there for soccer and other sports, but what's going to happen in the old athletic, you know, Well, center? I don't think football I, – I don't think football will pr – they're probably not going to be primarily in the, in the indoor facility. They're probably still going to use that space to be outside, I imagine. 
No, but I'm talking about the administrative offices type deal. Someone asked I, I about... think there's going to be some offices and stuff. I'm sure there'll be some little offices and things like that still going on. I, I imagine that the weight room at the Oxford will probably still stay there as well. And that will just kind of become, I think, I think the, the, the Schmidt Center will become kind of like the football centric kind of thing. That's where the football weight room will be. And, and then now you've got the other athletes who will have a, a, another workout. It's in other words, you're not competing with a hundred kids on the football team for the weight room that you have. The hundred yeah. kids from the football team will be at the practice facility. And by the way, now baseball and soccer and, and, and softball now have a, the other weight room available. It just, as Coach Parsons put it that way, space. It spreads us out more. It gives us more room to grow even further. And that's yeah. what I think. That's what will happen to the Ops. It will become sort of the athletic center for the Olympic sports and for some of the other sports. I think that's eventually where it will go. In my okay. Opinion. Yeah. I don't know that for certain, but that's just – that would seem to be logical. You're certainly not going to tear it down. It's too, it's too good of a, of a facility for that. It just becomes – just get right the Olympic now. Sports Center. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So definitely a, a super exciting time, and we'll probably, well, I imagine as as the year goes on, we'll talk, and as things go a little bit, uh, uh, move on a little bit, we will uh, talk about this again. But I guess so to go from news that's super exciting to go to news that's super saddening, boring, sad, disappointing is uh, our loss to ODU. Uh, we lost, you know, it, it was, was senior day, and I was, I was going over the, the depth chart, the two deep, uh, for last weekend, and it's like <laughs> there's probably six, seven seniors on the two deep. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're, we're not uh, – obviously, the, the loss of Dijon Smith, uh, Andre Kirk, uh, Lucky Whitehead, Lucky. Ian Parms, uh, Braden Lyons, that's probably the – the biggest, the biggest loss. Um, that veteran leadership that you're going to want with the younger kids coming in. And and, and so I, I don't think, you know, yeah, it was a, a disappointing season. I, but to me, uh, and again, I'm I'm a glass full type of guy, and just looking at looking at the players that we have incoming and the players that have come in the previously. Again, this this. This recruiting class that's graduating this year, other than Lucky Whitehead, was the worst recruiting recruiting class in all of college football in 2011. This was the worst. Um, and if you if you look at our look at that, we probably have three people that are that have a, a very legitimate chance uh, of being on an NFL roster next year. So uh, yes, it was disappointing, but. Um, uh, it's uh, better times are ahead, I guess. I was more angry. I wasn't, I, I, yes, I was disappointed. I mean, I'm sad to see some of that great veteran leadership, especially on defensive side, like Andre Kirk and that, or, or center brand Lions. But I was more, as more, well, I'm sad to see the seniors, leave, but I was more frustrated at how many penalties were thrown on basically both sides of the ball and on both teams. I mean, that, this crew seemed very – for the last game of the season, which didn't mean much to – except for maybe ODU, or who was, I guess, playing for ball eligibility, I think someone said. Yeah. Well, they would, they had enough – I don't think they're eligible because they're in transition. But, yeah, I mean, six wins is basically ball eligible. But, I mean, they were quick to throw out their flags on Saturday. I mean, it was like laundry all over the field from start of the game to the end of it. There were some questionable calls. Yeah. But, I mean, the veteran leadership is what I'm going to miss most out of these guys. You know, guys like Kirk and Lyons. So. Yeah. I, I'm actually – and I know he didn't have a good year this year, and I know he didn't have a good year last year, but yeah, I, uh, I really warmed up to Willie Dukes. Um, I'm going to be sad to see him go. Uh, he did not come around the way he was supposed to this year, but – I'm going to be sad to see Willie go. He was he he was an electric when he was a sophomore, and I really thought big things were going to happen. And I hope he gets drafted. Um, the other thing I I brought up uh, earlier when we were talking about this, um, the the difference between terrible season and good season is so razor thin. <clears throat> we lost four games this year on the last play of the game. Oh yeah, you're talking the difference between three and nine and seven and six is a matter of probably thirty 
seconds mm. of game time. It's yeah. a razor thin. And that, and and we'll kind of, I, I think next week we'll, we may do a, a more detailed breakdown of everything, but um, you're right. I mean, if, if you think back quickly, there's a, a couple freak plays that happened. A couple, if you stop a couple big runs, I mean, you make one more play, you get one more first down. You know, and that that's kind of the what if, and that's what makes things disappointing is knowing like we were we were kind of right there. Um, but you know, hopefully this is hopefully this is a good thing. Hopefully the the losing um, kind of shows the all the things that you, you you take more notice of the things you do wrong when you lose, basically. So hopefully moving forward, we'll, we'll... No, nothing inspires a person more than the pain of loss. Mm-hmm. And never wanting to feel it again. And trust me, those kids, obviously other than the seniors who are, of course, now gone, but the juniors, the sophomores, the freshmen, they're not going to want to do this again. They're going to work harder in the weight room. Coach Partridge already talked about, you know, the plans getting in place now for the new workouts. Yeah. You know, it, pain and loss is a motivation tool, especially for an athlete. Yeah. And so while it sucks for us as the fans – I think it helps build the character and yes, we had the, we had another rebuilding season, damn it. But (laughs) it is what it is guys. And, and, and I know, so we, we catch some flack for being, you know, sunshine pumpers here, but well, that's what we are. We're, we're, we're pretty happy about stuff. So. You know what? Uh, sorry, Dan. Uh, I, I think I think it was underdog dynasty or one of those uh, websites reported like is tr- Charlie Partridge and next Brett Beal on there. And that's pretty, that. and that's pretty high praise coming from a, a web, you know, one of those websites, you know, Brett Bielema who took over for legendary Barry Alvarez of Wisconsin, you know, he took over from him and basically, you know, kept up a program before he basically bolted on Wisconsin to go run Arkansas and look where Arkansas is right now. But. Well, yeah, I, I was, I think pretty high praise. So I guess, um, so to move on a little bit, we only got a, a, a couple more minutes here, but I wanted to to quickly, well, kind of give an update on on um, Conference USA. And everybody knows uh, the disappointing thing of, of what happened at UAB. Nothing, I think it was just the people, the Board of Trustees in, in charge, or whoever was in charge, they knew this was going to happen. I mean, UAB could have gone undefeated and, and, and been playing in a bowl game or in a, a – well, BCS Bowl, I guess I'll still call them, um, could have gone undefeated, and they still, there still would have been, they probably still would have happened. They, they knew this was going to happen. So it, it is a disappointing thing, and we feel for them as, as um, fellow Conference USA members. I agree. Keep up the fight. I know it's not much of comfort, but, I mean, don't give up yet. I mean, there's people out there in Alabama that still want to see UAB playing football. So keep up with the news and just – Keep up the fight. Keep your spirits up, guys. We feel you from Al Nation back here. Yeah, I, you know, I, I've I've chatted a lot with the Blazer faithful over the years. Um, and, you know, we've had some great games with the Blazers even before we were in Conference USA when we yeah. played them out of conference. It's monumentally memorable games, blocked field goals, um, exciting games. You know, I, I enjoyed playing against them. And, and what's happening to them is truly heartbreaking for their fans and yeah and and you know let's keep on you know it's not just football either they cancel bowling and rifling you know and they may lose their status as division one as well well and they're probably not going to be in conference usa because conference usa bylaws specifically state that every member must play football football yeah yeah Yeah. so it's a tragedy it really is there's a heartbreaking video out there right now of the players being talked to by president Watts. If you have the time, Google it, look it up, UAB players and the president, it's heart wrenching. And it shows you the passion that those players have. And I know our FAU players have for this, the many of them, this is their future. This is their dream. And it was ripped away from them. So I uh, free a free UAB is what I'm going to say. I <laughs> sincerely hope that the blazer faithful get it turned around and that the board of trustees wakes up and does the right thing. So free UAB. Free UAB. Uh, well, I guess we'll, we'll go ahead and, and we'll, we'll wrap it up there. Um, 
one of the things that, that we wanted to do moving forward, uh, now that football season's over, we'll probably, we may stagger these a little bit. We may not do them every, every week, or we, we may for the next couple weeks, uh, maybe until the new year, since we still have some stuff to talk about. Next week, I think we're going to do just a little bit more in-depth um, football wrap-up, like I said. Uh, and we'd like to have more people involved, and, and we may, we're may we going to work on how that could happen. We may do a live event. We may uh, maybe invite some more people to be a part of it. And if you want to be a part of it, um, definitely let us know. Again, as always, you can uh, check us out on at Inside the Borough on Twitter. Um, we've been doing a little more uh, Twittering there. And as always, you can check us out on uh, .com. Uh So I guess uh, for tonight, that wraps it up. Lots of exciting things happening in Owl Nation, even though we had a disappointing season. Still some, uh, hopefully some, some good things to look forward to. So uh, for Scott and Aaron, uh, my name is Dan. Make sure to catch us uh, whenever you can. And uh, have a great night. Go Owls. Go Owls up, everybody.